Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Again, I am so sorry for the way my voice sounds. I am still fighting a pesty cough. I hope it will be over soon. Again, I do apologize. Today's video is all about creating Windows Virtual Machine on top of your Synology box. Now, the reason I am doing this video is actually because of you guys. After creating our virtual DSM uh, virtual machine video, I've gotten a lot of requests and questions and uh, messages on Twitter about people who didn't even know that they have the option to use their Synology box as a hypervisor. So uh, this video is about making us all aware of the hypervisor capabilities of our Synology boxes. Now that depends on your exact Synology box. Not all Synology boxes have this capability. You will see how easy it is to install Virtual Machine Manager, to create a virtual machine, and to install the Synology Virtual Machine guest tools. Now, I love Synology for their hardware and for their software, but they really deserve a standing ovation for the way they take something that was previously very complex and was reserved for professional IT guys and making it so simple in a matter of a few clicks, a few next, next finish clicks, you will have a virtual machine running on your Synology box, something that in enterprise tool like VMware ESXi or Hyper-V is uh, maybe the process itself is the same, but it's a lot more uh, involved than this one. This is really aims for the, the home user or the not so technical user, and you will see it in your own eyes. So I dedicate this video for all of us Synology owners, so we will be able to better uh, take advantage of our Synology boxes, including using them as a hypervisor. So join me in this video, you will see how easy it is. And of course, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. Let's go over to the computer and see how this is done. Hey there, okay, so we are at the computer and as I said, the process of creating a virtual machine on top of a Synology NES is so simple, so easy. Synology have made excellent work in creating the user interface. Very simple for the average user, uh, the user that does, doesn't work in IT, doesn't have experience in data centers and enterprise hypervisors. So you will see how easy it is that even the first time Synology user or the user that is not maybe highly technical can definitely do this process and have uh, some advantages in running uh, virtual machines. Two assumptions this video will make. First one is that you already installed Virtual Machine Manager from the package center. You will have some uh, very simple, very easy wizard. I don't want to waste time on this step. The second assumption is you already have the ISO for the operating system you want to install. It can be Windows, it can be Linux, but the ISO must already be there. Now, for Windows, Microsoft has made it very easy to grab an ISO with a Windows Media Creation Tool. I will provide a link to the web page where you can download this tool. So, let's dive right into the process We'll keep it very short, very on topic, very focused. First thing we need to do, obviously, is log in. And we will launch Virtual Machine Manager. We'll go to the Virtual Machine tab. And we'll click on Create. That's how easy it is to get the process of creating a virtual machine uh, uh, running on your Synology NES. If you know, uh, if you've worked with uh, ESXi or uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, 
the, you already know what this process is equivalent to, but I think you can agree with me that this is actually a lot simpler. Not that uh, the, the competition is much harder, but for the average Joe, this is a lot, a lot more simple. So the reason we are being asked what operating system we want to install is because, uh, for example, for Microsoft Windows, Synology will also mount an ISO for us with drivers if we'll need them and after the operating system install we will need to install guest tools for the IT guys you know that this will be equivalent to the VMware VMware tools this is a way for the operating system for the host and the operating system to share and communicate information so we will uh, choose Microsoft Windows, click on storage. I only have one volume, so there are no options for me. Let's give this virtual machine a name. Let's keep it simple. I'll give it four CPUs and four gigabytes of memory. I'll give it 60 gigabytes of hard drive, virtual hard drive. Let's click on the gear icon just to see what options we have. Okay, we have um, several options for hard drive controller, IDE, SATA or Virtio. I recommend Virtio because it, it performs a little better. And I, I also tend to uh, check the space reclamation because if the operating system uses uh, uh, hard disk space and this space is now being freed like you deleted some files or whatever, I want the system to get this uh, space back for usage. Click on next and make sure this checkbox is also ticked. This will uh, what provide the guest operating system and drivers for the installation process. For example, now that we chose Virtio as our uh, hard disk controller, we will need, uh, in order to launch the Windows installation, we will need to point the installer for the drivers. I will of course show that. Let's click on network. Again, let's click on the gear icon just to see what options we have. Model of the uh, virtual uh, NIC. I always choose Virtio again, it be just because it performs a little better. Let's click OK and next. <coughs> All right, so as we can see, Synology has already mounted or will mount guest uh, tools and drivers as a virtual CD drive. We will need to supply an ISO for the operating system. I have my ISOs on my Synology ready for use. And from here, I don't change anything else. I just click on next. Permissions, again, if you have a specific need, I can just next through this and apply. Now, a word of caution. This virtual machine will now be created. In order to kickstart the process, we will need to power on the virtual machine. And from here, until we will have a, a, a Windows 10 installation wizard, it can take some time of course, depending on your Synology model, this can take anywhere from two minutes to five minutes to eight minutes. Uh, this, this Synology device is a DS918 Plus. For me, for some reason, it takes five minutes to get the installation wizard going. So what I did, I created a virtual machine before launching this uh, uh, video recording just to get uh, the process running. The, the options are exactly the same, drivers are exactly the same, everything is the same, and now we can just click on connect and start the process of the Windows installation. All right, we will click on next, click on install. Of course, if you have a, a a volume that is all SSD, uh, you will have a better for performing uh, installation here. Again, I've seen 
this window gets stuck anywhere from a minute to five minutes. So I will pause the recording right here and I will resume it when, when this uh, a wizard comes back online. All right, so this actually didn't take very long. Let's click on the uh, version of Windows we want to install. Let's click on Windows 10 Enterprise for our case. Click on Accept. Click on Custom. And as you can see here, we do not have a hard drive to select and start the operating system installation. This is because we chose the Virt.io as the hard drive controller and we will need to supply drivers that Synology have already mounted for us. So let's click on Browse and click on the Synology VM tool Drive, iSCSI driver, Windows 10. We are installing 64-bit, so we'll choose that folder. And here is the driver, let's click on Next. The, operating, the, the Windows installer will now get the drivers and install them and we will be able to continue our installation. And that's it. We will choose our 60 gigabytes drive. Click on Next. And at this point, the operating system installation is kicked off. There is no point in waiting uh, for the installation to be, uh, to be over. I will pause the recording right here and I will resume it when the operating system is already installed. There are a few steps we need to, uh, to uh, pay attention to after the operating system is installed, so stay tuned. All right, so as we can see, Windows is now installed. Everything is up and running. If you remember, when we uh, installed Windows, we needed to supply the hard disk drivers because we chose Virt.io as our hard disk vendor. And now, if you can see, we don't have network because, again, we need to supply drivers for our network uh, um, driver because we chose Virt.io as our uh, uh, network interface vendor. Now, we can choose uh, uh, in the beginning of the process to stick with the E1000 driver, which will work out of the box just fine. I understand it's simpler, it's, it's easier, but Virt.io performs a lot better, especially in cases where you run multiple virtual machines on your Synology box. The communication between the virtual machines will be much better and with a lot less, le less latency with a Virt.io driver. Now installing the Virt.io driver is very easy. It's a part of the guest operating uh, tools we are uh, obligated to do anyway. So in order to get this going, all we need to do is to go to our, uh, uh, to our computer. And launch the Synology VM tools installation. very straightforward process, nothing too complicated. And let's get the process running. Now, if you can see right here, you see that I have a virtual machine already installed with the Synology VM tools installed. And we can see that the guest, the host op uh, CPU and the host memory is showing like this one, but the IP address is showing as well. Because now, after the VM tools are installed, the host can get data from the uh, virtual machine, and it doesn't just add up to, know, to knowing the IP address. It's about space reclamation working. It's about uh, metrics flowing in from the virtual machines to the host. It's about a better user experience when you're uh, um, in the VNC window. So installing the VM tools is not only recommended, in my opinion, it's even something that uh, should be mandatory. 
So let's see if it's finished, not quite. But this should not take more than one or two minutes to do. We can see that the process is installing drivers and here we are a popped up with installing the Virtio serial driver. We will need to, in, to click on install. There is no reason not to. And in a minute or two, this process will be finished and we will have network connectivity. Here we go. We are popped up with network connectivity. And the icon is even changed. So we have network in, much like uh, we had on a different virtual machine or even a physical machine. <clears throat> All right, the process is finished. At this point, we will need to restart our virtual machine. After it's done, actually, the process is, will be over and we can start using this virtual machine. So this is how I recommend doing it. There is a, a, a simpler way to do it. For example, sticking with IDE or SATA as a, the virtual hard drive vendor or choosing E1000 as the network driver. Choosing these options will make the inst installation process much smoother. You will not be asked for drivers. You will not be, you will not be uh, dependent on installing the VM tools to get network connectivity. But again, the, the options I chose is something that I recommend. The Virtio hard drive driver performs a little better. The Virtio network driver performs a little better. So I definitely think these steps should be something that you take the time to configure and in general the process is not something that i think that it turns the process into a highly technical and involved process so in conclusion this is the way i install virtual machines on my synology box of course i don't use the synology box as my main hypervisor i do use VMware ESXi and the vCenter uh, uh, to centrally manage them. But I know that this feature interests a lot of Synology users. So this is how it's done. And we've get, got from the beginning to the end to a running virtual machine with a desktop ready to take your workloads. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would have done it any better or you noticed any mistakes I done, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. Thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.